some of the best potatoes I've ever had. Easily. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm starting this morning by ravaging our fridge just to see what we have, what leftover vegetables we have, whatever leftovers we have, so I can come up with a menu for the day. The weekends are generally very, very relaxed for us. Since the kids don't have school, they're usually up and they have their smoothies or whatever that we've prepped for breakfast, and then they would normally be allowed to go out with their friends to play. So I started off by ravaging our fridge for all the leftovers and all the vegetables that I could find. I also found some potatoes and I felt like today was the day to make one of Trey's favorite dishes and that is an oven roasted smashed potato. Of course, just like any other day, we have to start by washing our vegetables thoroughly. Along with the crispy potatoes, I'm also going to be roasting up some vegetables, and then I will be making other things along the way for the kids as well. When was the last time you sharpened your knife? Now, if it wasn't for Trey, I would not have sharpened my knives. But now, since I've learned how to, it's so easy and it's so much more effective when you're going to cut up your vegetables. So here's just a friendly reminder to sharpen your knives. I decided to make a chickpea soup on the side. I plan on making this for dinner time for Trey. So I'm getting this started right now so it can cook all throughout the afternoon. I just have some very simple base ingredients. We have some onions, carrots, celery, some bell peppers, and some tomatoes going in. Now we're adding some chickpeas, which we homemade just by boiling our dry chickpeas. As you can see, I organized our spices, our bulk spices, in this black box that I got from the Dollar Tree. It is so convenient, I just bring the whole box down and I season up anything I want. Today, I'm seasoning the soup with some ancho chili powder, smoked paprika, onion powder, oregano, and I'm gonna add some water as well. Once I get the soup boiling, I'm going to push it off to the side and have it simmer on low all throughout the night until dinner time. And now let's get started on them crispy potatoes. You're gonna start with a pot of water, bring it up to a boil and add some salt, and then we're going to prep the potatoes. I like to trim the imperfections off of our potatoes and then just kind of cut them into smaller pieces like this, about half or some even quartered if needed, if the potatoes are really too big. The oven was crying out because we were warming up our prepped tritoli pasta, and that's what the kids had for lunch today. Let's boil up these potatoes. So I'm just slowly dropping these potatoes into our hot boiling water. And the goal is to boil these potatoes until fork tender, so about 10, 15 minutes or so. So here's the thing. We actually took a little bit of a spontaneous trip somewhere really, really cool. back and uh, now it's dinner time actually so we're gonna continue with what we were cooking so I can show you these delicious crispy potatoes that we make and it's so good so remember these potatoes they should be actually be nice and soft now so I'm gonna show you what we do uh, once it is nice and kind of tender I'll show you on a parchment lined baking sheet, we're going to add a little bit of grapeseed oil. You can use any oil you like, we just like to use a grapeseed oil. And you're gonna swish it around a little bit, you can use a paintbrush if needed. And then we're gonna add a little layer of salt on the bottom. 
Then you're gonna place a potato on your salt and oil mixture, roll it around a little bit, and then use something to smash the potatoes flat. This way you're expanding the surface area and you're getting more surface area to roast up crispy, as crispy as it can get. Since I have a lot of potatoes, I'm just going to drain the potatoes, then I'm going to add all of the potatoes at once on my tray. You can definitely put all these potatoes in a bowl and just season it with the oil and the salt that way as well. I just like to do it this way. That oil on the bottom of the tray really does help get these potatoes extra crispy. So I'm just gonna show you sort of up front, up close, how I'm doing each potato. Not all of the potatoes are going to smash right, so just do what you can, do the best that you can. In fact, some of the broken ones are great snacks and they also make extra little crispy bits once they're roasted. I'm going to drizzle the top with some extra grapeseed oil, season it one more time with the salt on the very top, and then we're going to bake it in a hot oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30-35 minutes. Now everyone's oven is different. If you don't have convection, it's going to be a little bit different. So just keep a lookout. Our soup is ready. Now, since we're having the potatoes for dinner, we're going to pair it with some vegetables and we'll just have the soup for prep for next time. I'm chopping whatever vegetables that I had on hand. So some zucchinis here, we've got some beets and broccoli. We're gonna put this on a baking sheet, season it up with some oil, some salt, any seasonings you like, some smoked paprika, onion powder, and bake it in the same oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes or so. Roasted vegetables is one of the things that we eat regularly every, almost every single day actually, because it is so versatile and it's so easy to put together. We had some leftovers and sort of prepped items which we can use for dinner tonight for the kids and I decided to make a little sweet treat. I had the idea to make some almond butter cookies today just on a whim just as a sweet treat for all of us and I'm just winging it basically. I have three tablespoons of flax here and we're going to put six tablespoons of water to make some flax eggs which we'll hold in our cookies. I have sort of an idea of how to make cookies just off of the top of my head. We start off with about three quarter cups of coconut oil, just some melted coconut oil. We're gonna add about one and a half cups of coconut sugar. We find that whatever that we make, usually one and a half cups of sugar is generally a good amount. And then just eyeballing our almond butter, I added about a quarter cup to half a cup of almond butter here. Just checking really quick on the potatoes, it looks like it could still go in for a little bit longer. So we are going to put our vegetables in for about 20 minutes or so. I like to use a combination of vanilla extract and almond extract. When we use this combination of both of these extracts, it makes whatever that we're baking taste kind of buttery and I really, really like it. I'm using some home ground organic spelt flour here and some whole wheat flour because that's what we have. We ran out of the spelt. And I'm going to sort of eyeball this. We're gonna use about two and a half cups to three cups roughly. And some baking soda as well. I've been making cookies kind of freehand for a few years now and I kind of know the consistency the cookie should be. So that's what I'm going off of. Different flours act differently, so I like to gauge how much flour I need for a cookie dough just by looking at the texture and the feel of it when I mix all of the ingredients together. This is the consistency that I like to look for when it comes to making cookies out of home ground flour. And it kind of holds together just like this. I'm gonna chill this for a little bit in the freezer just until it is a little bit set. So I would say about five, 10 minutes or so until the oven is ready. 
For dinner, we already have a prepped container of some lentil bolognese sauce. So I figured it would be a very speedy dinner just by using this pre-made sauce and we're going to cook some pasta with it. It was very nice of Mercy to come and help out with cooking, so she is going to be in charge of helping us make the first batch of our almond butter cookies. For those of you who have watched us for a while, you know how capable Mercy is in making cookies and making really anything. So I just let her know roughly the size that I want the cookies and just let her go. She's also a pro at snacking on whatever she's making as well. Something like this? Yeah. This first batch, I wanted to make the markings of a traditional peanut butter cookie type thing. So we just crisscrossed our fork and made some beautiful designs. Our kava toppy pasta is done. We drained it but left a little bit of water in the pot. And then we're going to just pour in our beautiful bolognese sauce in. And while that's going, Mercy is going to bake up our first batch of cookies. It may look like there's a lot of water in this pasta, but we cooked the pasta really al dente. I'm going to continue to cook the pasta until all the water is absorbed. Ooh wee, look at these crispy, crispy roasted potatoes. This is one of Trey's favorite dishes. In fact, it may actually be his favorite potato dish. And paired with our roasted vegetables, a perfect dinner. I'm just finishing our pasta for the kids. I have some salt and nutritional yeast just for some added cheesiness. And then it is nice and ready to serve. Here are some really super duper crispy bits. You can see the crisp. You can almost taste the crisp, can't you? The first batch of cookies were kind of flat, so I decided to experiment by just rolling the dough balls without flattening them on the second round, and this is what it looks like. So we have a variety of cookies. <laughs> okay. Okay. I hope these potatoes are crispy. I see one that's crispy right here. Mm -hmm. There's one right there. Mm. Yeah, these things are a delight. Some of the best potatoes I've ever had. Easily. Let's do a little. Do one more bite. I don't know what it is, Bob. Because they're crispy. Because it is super simple. Just boil potato squash and bake and it's and so good and they're like it's so buttery yeah it is huh i think it's just because when we boil it it already pre but it makes the potato creamy you gotta make it yeah Thicken it all the bits. You like the thicker ones too? It's not bad. It's all good. It's all good. Save those for last. <laughs> Did power through these vegetables first. The vegetables are pretty good too. I taste it. Not compared to the potato. Mm -hmm. 
Today we took a really spontaneous trip and we went to CJ Hendry's art exhibit in the middle of the desert, which is actually really close to us, which is really surprising. And um, it was really, it was a very interesting art exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Public Pool. I'm not sure if you guys know, but she does these really cool color pencil drawings that look really realistic. Yeah, it was the world's largest pool. <laughs> 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 yeah, and it was, yeah, it was like a, about an hour, 15 minute drive. It was like in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. But I, I was telling Trey, it's kind of the same as us. Where we are is in the middle of nowhere, going to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we drove to the middle of nowhere from the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but it was cool. To go see a, a blow, up blow up pool. pool. Shut up. It was it cool. Was cool. The art was cool. It was cool. We took some really cool pictures. I thought yeah. it was worth it. The, yeah, no, the art was like, if you like art, like you'd really appreciate it because it was just unbelievable. Like how real these that, pictures are. Yeah, and drawn with color pencils. By hand, yeah. By hand, I mean, like completely blew my mind. Yep. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. And then so we came home a little bit late. We kind of stopped. Well, Trey kind of stopped whatever that he was doing in the middle of it and just said, let's just go. So that's what we did. And that's why we had to take a little bit of a, a break. And um, we came back right back at it. <laughs> we really hope that you give these potatoes a try. It's really, really good. Um, it's so easy and it's just so tasty. So yeah, give so these good. a try. Let us know what you think in the comments. And subscribe if you're new. We would love to see you on the next video. If you're looking to make a very impressive potato dish, definitely try these. They are really, really, really good. It is time for some cookies and it's the perfect Ooh, nice. dessert after our dinner. These cookies were nice and soft and chewy, ooey gooey, so, so good. Alrighty, I'm going to enjoy my cookie. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate all your love and support for those of you who always tune in. And we thank you so much for being a part of our family. We'll see you next time. Bye. I'm not drinking this hot. <laughs> <laughs>